kingdom principles for wealth transfer. For wealth transfer. We started this year, 2020, with the great theme given to me by the Holy Spirit as our year of double harvest. And uh, our text is from Matthew 9, 37 to 38, where Jesus, speaking to his disciples, said, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. I made it clear from the beginning that the um, that the emphasis of this theme of the year double harvest is on soul winning. Little did we understand the import of that word until the coronavirus hit the world and became a pandemic. Since then, I have watched Since then, I have watched in awe how many people turned to God in the past two months all over the world. I'm sure some of you also received those videos of people praying and crying out to the Lord even along the streets and every nook and cranny of uh, the world. People turned to God. Uh, that was a great harvest. And this is just the beginning of the double harvest as we are gradually coming out of the global lockdown of world economies and stepping into a new way of doing things. We must begin to reset mm -hmm. our minds. We must begin to reset our minds as well as answer that question which I asked last Sunday, you know, the title of the message last Sunday was what really matters in life? What really matters to you? Uh, you need to revisit that message to get acquainted with the principles there. In the next two months, we shall study on a broad theme titled The Scriptural Perspective of Wealth. We are going to focus a bit on wealth. And um, for today, this service is focusing on wealth transfer. The rest of the services we'll be having our midweek service on Thursdays and on Sundays. We'll be teaching on wealth creation. You might wonder why we have to be talking about wealth in the midst of chaos and um, death all over the world. We are just being a step ahead. We don't have to you know, dwell on all the things, dwell on just the now and forget that there is a future ahead of us. As we watch life take a new turn after this global plague of coronavirus, there definitely will be structural changes in world economies. Many businesses may not recover. Some will survive. However, new businesses will emerge. God is poised for a wealth transfer to people who will have faith to believe him for such supernatural manifestations. Watch the next 10 years of this decade. We shall teach on what should be our mindset in this supernatural season, in these two months that we have stepped into. But today I will teach on the topic I've mentioned, God's kingdom principles for wealth transfer. What is the difference between wealth creation and wealth transfer? Wealth transfer comes through God's supernatural act. 
while wealth creation is a systematic and intentional effort to create wealth. Like it said in Deuteronomy 8, 18, remember the Lord your God. He is the one who gives you power to be successful. Uh, King James Version says it is he who gives you power to get wealth in order to fulfill the covenant he confirmed to your ancestors with an oath. If we linger a little in that verse, you'll find out that wealth creation is God's covenant with his people. It's God's covenant with his people. I'm very much aware that people have their misgivings when it comes to wealth creation. People have their misgivings because of the way uh, many people have taught on wealth and the way that uh, some Christians have handled wealth. There are many misgivings, but it does not change God's original plan to put wealth in the lives of his children. And of course, when we talk about wealth, we are not talking just about money. There are a lot of things that we can feed into that word wealth. So it is God, the scriptures, we just read uh, Deuteronomy 8.18, it says, remember the Lord your God. He is the one who gives you power to be successful, and that is to get wealth in order to fulfill the covenant he confirmed to your ancestors. Um, it is God who had made this covenant with his people. If anyone listening has problems with a child of God living in wealth, just come along with us as we teach on this in-depth teaching. It's an all-important subject. I don't know what anyone can achieve on earth without um, wealth, without money, without healthy, relationships, without connections that would enrich your life, without friends, healthy friends that will add value to your life. All of them are wealth. So we cannot ignore it. I made bold to say to you, it is the deception of the devil to keep the children of God blind when it comes to success and wealth in life. But if you pay attention to that scripture, it will be a long way to help you. Now, for you who may have your doubts about should a Christian uh, be in wealth and whatever reasons we give ourselves, let me uh, stretch your mind a little bit for you. The master designer of the world that we live in is wealthy and rich. He is rich in knowledge, rich in creativity, and in wisdom. The beauty and vastness of his creation reveals the depth of who he is. I am talking about the almighty God himself. When someone labors so hard to convince the church of Jesus Christ that wealth is of the devil and cast a sparing guilt on any believer who lives in wealth, or even on people who are yet aspiring to create wealth. One can only see through their ignorance of God's true nature, his true nature. Because if you see the true nature of God, you will have no doubt. The God who created this beautiful earth, the skies, the moon, the sun, the seas, the land, the people, the animals, the vegetation. He's a wealthy God. 
It's not a poor God. And if we are his children, he doesn't expect us to wallow in poverty. So we need to reset our minds so that we can get into what God has in front of us. In Luke chapter 12, verse 32, Jesus says to the disciples, he says, so don't be afraid, little flock, for it is your father's great happiness to give you the kingdom. In King James Version, he says, you should not be afraid, little flock. So he's talking to his people, little flock, for it is your father's great pleasure. This is happiness to give you the kingdom. God wants you to grow in wealth for his kingdom purposes. During this coronavirus pandemic, I listened to other authentic prophetic voices within the global church and heard the same words the Holy Spirit has spoken to me since the last quarter of 2019, which are double harvest, wealth transfer, supernatural signs and wonders, miracles, passing on of the baton to the next generation. These were the words when I began to seek the Lord uh, the last quarter of 2019 concerning 2020. And these words were the words he dropped into my spirit that they are the things that will happen in this year. And listening to other uh, prophetic voices, authentic prophetic voices, uh, prophets who study the, <clears throat> the Bible, who hear the voice of the Lord, and they are able to interpret the move of the Lord. Um, when I listened to them, I heard these same words. The Holy Spirit began to stir my heart to prepare his church for this move in this decade. Therefore, I will now speak prophet prophetically into your life about God's move in this 2020. The move of the Lord will prepare us after this um, move of, you know, the, the hovering of the spirit of death over the entire world. We realize that this is not the end of the world. Yes, it's part of the signs of the end times, but this is not the end of the world. The church of Jesus Christ is still on earth, so this is not the end. And because it's not the end, we need to be wise. We cannot, as Bible believers, to lose hope because of all the things that have happened. The scriptures still give us faith in the great and good God that he is still in charge of his world. He has not turned the world into run ahead and bring about the conflict. And so many things I'm sure you have also heard you know, people running in into world, one world government and so many things, people trying to, to air their opinion on things that the script was in the wrong way. Even though all of that is happening, the end of the world has not come. So how do we live? How do we order our lives? Are we going to choose to live in depression? Are we going to believe God that there is still a tomorrow? Everything about your life is not about the job you do. What should be your concern is God, who is your source. And that word source is also a word for the word father. 
If God is your source, God is your father. And we want to pay attention to what God has. None of the things that have happened recently took God on our ways. It's not confused. It's not trying to call uh, a meeting in heaven <clears throat> and trying to rearrange things. No, he had known from eternal past that at this time in the world, there will be the coronavirus. He had known, and he knew when it will end. He knew that life will continue. So we want to cue into the plan of God. That's why we are doing this service this morning. We want to cue into the plan of God. If you agree with me that there is life after coronavirus, then let's begin to think what should be our next action. So as I listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, listen to confirmation because the prophetic word has to be judged and confirmed. It's not enough to keep telling people, the Lord told me, the Lord told me, the Lord told me. And uh, the Lord doesn't just speak to one prophet for the rest of the world. Maybe one person might be the first voice that came out, but that word has to be judged. And I take my time to judge whatever I perceive as a word from the Lord. So having uh, submitted what the Holy Spirit was speaking to me the tail end of 2019, and hearing others globally repeating the same thing, I came to see that the Spirit of God is one, giving us the same message. Now let's go a little bit into the prophetic word. Uh, for people who study the Hebrew traditions and calendar, 2020 is a year of double. It's a year of double. For us, it is 2020 for the, in the Jewish calendar, for them, I had said this earlier this year, I think in the month of February, when I thought I had thought on this uh, in our church. In the Jewish calendar this year is 5780, 5780. Now, when you look at 2020, 2020 is double, you know, double 20, which gives us 40. Is double. And then for the Jewish calendar, they have 5780. 80 is also double, a double of 40. I will not go into uh, an in depth teaching on this, but I will just extract something that will help us build our faith. So we find that we actually fitted into the double harvest theme of 2020. That the Lord has given us double harvest, and we are watching souls. In fact, we out of the ugly situation that has just happened on earth. He has harvested so many. I told us of uh, reports about increase in the sales of Bibles as people were demanding for Bibles. So much, some demanding for prayer, some looking for an answer and searching for something bigger than, than, than themselves and also bigger than the coronavirus. People needed something, someone greater than the problem. So in out of the chaos that happened, there are harvests of souls. And only God could do that. I hear you. And I say to us, it's just the beginning of harvest. And it's just the beginning of the double. We, we just stepped into the double of the harvest. But we should be ready to be part of the harvest. So God is resetting this season, this decade, starting from this year. The year 2020, from the interpretations 
of the the Jewish word. The, 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 the word 20 is said to represent hand. So this year, the works of your hands that had lingered, had delayed, that looked decayed, destroyed, wasted, this year the Lord who sets the works of your hand the, the first 20 is hand, the second 20 is mouth. I will just go ahead and say them, uh, take it on, pray about it, and study more. The Holy Spirit would enlighten your understanding. The hand represents the works of your hand. You can look at hand from the hand of the Lord, what the hand of the Lord does in the lives of his people. His hand blesses. So the works of your hand in 2020, the second 20 is mouth. The second 20, which is mouth, represents what you will eat, taste, taste and see that the Lord is good. So the hand represents the works of your hand and your mouth will taste of the goodness that comes from the works of your hand. Holy Spirit, help us here. I, I, I wish you say that also. Holy Spirit, help me, help my understanding, because definitely I will be sounding strange to many people, but you need to get it right in your spirit. At the first 20, the hand, the works of your hand, you have worked all these years of your life. It looks wasted. It looks like you didn't have the kind of harvest you desired. But the Lord is saying to us that in this year of double harvest, you will taste. You will taste of the goodness of the Lord over the works of your hand. The second aspect of the mouth is what your hand lays hold on. You will speak the word of God over it. You will speak, prophesy the word of God over it. Remember Ezekiel, when he was in the valley of the dry bones, he was asked to speak to the dry bones. It's for 2020 will do for us. And for us who have gone, you know, the whole world, not really just us, the whole world has gone through the 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 plague of the coronavirus. The new thing that the Lord will do for us is that in this year, after destruction and death and devastation, will come a double harvest. I, I, I hope you said amen to that. And um, you will see the reward your mouth will take of the goodness of the Lord, we must have a harvest in the global purposes. God would reset things by the middle of this year. I've heard not just one or two of the prophetic voices saying, this, that the Lord will reset things at the middle of this year. It will still be a, a season of conflicting circumstances out there in the world, but we as children of God are not to walk in fear. We are not to walk in fear. Oh, can I get a job again? Will I be able to pay my children's school fees? Will I be able to, um, to pay my house rent? Whatever are your concerns, God is your source. Maybe God can speak to you about a relocation. Maybe God can speak to you about changing what you are already doing. But don't walk in fear. Make God your source. Is bigger than those challenges. You should know and have an understanding of who you are in Christ. 
stand on God's word. God is the one who gives you the ability to create wealth. Stand on his covenant promises to bring down his kingdom here on earth, even in the midst of chaos. It is our Father's heart, our Father God, it is our Father God's heart to transfer wealth to his church for his kingdom purpose. But the question is, who amongst us in the church will have the faith and character and integrity to receive this word. Who amongst us would have the faith, the character, and the integrity to receive this word? God has done wealth transfer severally in past generations. You can remember Israel in the land of Egypt. God on the very night prior to their departure, gave them favor, the Bible said, before their slave masters. Gave them favor. Let somebody receive that word. God gave them favor before people who hated them and treated them as slaves. He gave them favor and the Bible said they, they spoiled the Egyptians. The King James Version said they despoiled the Egyptians because they, they asked for the wealth of the people. And those people were in pain. In fact, I have a scripture where the Bible said they were yet burying, they were yet burying Egyptians were yet burying their dead. So they were in pain. They were in confusion. And in the midst of it, supernaturally, there was a transfer of wealth into the hands of their slaves. Only God could do that. I, I pick it in my spirit. Somebody who has worked for an organization for so many years, you work for them, there will be mm. a transfer uh -huh. People of don't come. wealth from that organization to you. You need faith to believe. You need character. You need integrity. But Lay hold on that word. I sense it strong. Remember, we are looking at a decade. I'm not telling you something that will happen this evening, and that's it. So if it doesn't happen this evening or doesn't happen tomorrow, you give up on the whole thing. No, this is a decade, a transfer of wealth. And please, can I emphasize here, the wealth that Christians, some, not every Christian, the wealth that some Christians had acquired in the past few years and eventually it slipped off their hands. The reason is you did not anchor that your prosperity on kingdom purposes, God's kingdom purposes. You did not follow the scriptural principles that guides wealth. You sidetracked it and then it slipped off. You me to do it. So, God has always done um, wealth transfer in the past generations, but how soon God's people has often turned the world to self-serving purposes, idolizing and worshiping the world, ignoring 
scriptural principles of wealth. That is one thing that I've always personally blown my mind as to how easy it is for us children of God to ignore God. If you have been studying your Bible, we, we studied the one year Bible. If you have been studying your Bible, you realize that what you see the people of Israel do in the Bible is what we also do. God blesses them, but it just takes in a question of few years, they turn their hearts from the Lord who gave them the wealth and they begin to worship that wealth. And then God will be sounding warnings, sounding warnings, and they don't pay attention until their enemies will overwhelm them. So this time around, be willing to do it right. Do it the Bible way. The scriptural principles. Take your time. It's not about somebody is deceiving you to take your money in church. Take your time to study God's principles on wealth creation or wealth transfer. There are principles there in the Bible. And remember, it's a covenant. That's what we will do in this service. A covenant with God. It's already cut the covenant with us on the cross of Christ Jesus, but we renew it. We remind ourselves that we are people of covenant. If God is investing in our lives, he's investing so that the winning of souls will never, we don't give up winning of souls. Let's read from Deuteronomy 6. Let's focus on the wealth transfer at this time. Deuteronomy 6, 10 to 13. I will read from the New Living Translation. Deuteronomy 6, 10 to 13. The Lord God, the Lord your God will soon bring you into the land he swore to give you when he made a vow to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It is a land with large, prosperous cities that you did not build. Take note of that. It's a land that is prosperous. It's, it has prosperous cities that you did not build. The houses will be richly stocked with goods you did not produce. I read that verse 11 again. The houses will be richly stocked with goods you did not produce. You will draw water from cisterns you did not dig. And you will eat from vineyards and olive trees you did not plant. When you have eaten your fill in this land, be careful, verse 12, be careful not to forget the Lord who rescued you from slavery in the land of Egypt. You must fear the Lord your God and serve him. When you take an oath, you must use only his name. Now, let's keep that script. We are talking about the life insight of the global economy, and it starts with us as individuals. This is what the Lord is saying will happen. He will take us into a new system, economic system. He would give us land, large land, prosperous cities. He will make you live in cities that are prosperous, that you didn't build. Now this is transfer of wealth. You didn't build it. Now this thing, they are not just written uh, and uh, pending. They are things that really happen 
Israel got to Canaan, but they fought for it. When they got into Canaan, they fought. They possessed these promises of God, houses that you didn't build, and the houses are stocked with goods. You draw water from systems, from wells that you did not dig. You eat from vineyards and olive trees you did not plant. Okay, let this word be with you. This is what God is giving unto us, double harvest, double harvest, that he will increase you. He would increase the works of your hand. Yesterday, the men in our ministry had an outing, and they, 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 we all studied from our speaker, um, multiple streams of income, multiple streams of income. So these things would happen as we come out of this confusion, as we come out of what the world has called pandemic. These things will come to us, to the one who believes, I must emphasize that, to the one who believes, who has faith enough to believe that, yes, this word is for me. Someone is sensing it in your spirit that this word is for you. You are reaching out to it by faith. In the course of these two months, we are going to teach about the principles on how you can start something new under the scriptural uh, principles and how to sustain it. Now, child of God, never, 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 ever forget God in matters of wealth. You may have your personal reason to somebody, but God's concern is he will put food on your table. Your house rent will be paid. Your children will be taken care of. Every personal things will be running concurrently with the kingdom work. There will never be a time when the kingdom is supposed to be on a standstill while uh, God waits for you to have enough money to build the house you want to build, to buy the land you want to buy, to do all your personal things before his kingdom. They both will run concurrently. Your family will be taking care of bread on your table, yet at the same time, you're paying attention to the work of the kingdom, soul winning. And soul winning takes more than just going out to speak to people. So never ever forget God in matters of wealth. Never forget God, never. God's heart is to use our wealth to build his kingdom here on earth. As a matter of fact, you need to, to change your perspective when you think about the kingdom of God and wealth or money. You need to change your perspective because God can rain money from heaven. God can rain building materials from heaven. God can, anything we need here, he can send it from heaven. But he chose in his wisdom not to do it that way. He's given us the opportunity to partner with him. We are co-laborers with him. He's given us the opportunity to partner with him so that we can be blessed. He doesn't want to use us like a robot, no. He wants his blessings to pass through us. Don't hoard it, don't sit on it. Let it pass through you and remember him. Remember that there are other people who need to know Jesus. Remember that Everything the church of Jesus does should be to worse soul winning. People really matter to God. People matter to God. And we need to, to um, set our hearts on that. 
Now, at this point, I want to take us through a prayer of dedication to the Lord concerning what we have heard. A prayer of dedication. Um, I want you to get the emblems of the Holy Communion. Let's get the Holy Communion ready. We want to both cut covenant with the Lord and renew our covenant with the Lord. For some of us who already are in the 